Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first session of Global Young Scientists Quick Fire Pitch with the topic of sustainability. We are going to present you uh, four different presentations today. Each will last around eight minutes. And after the presentations are done, we're going to have our question and answer session. And uh, just, just give me a second. And, I, and now let's welcome our first presenter and let's get it started with it. Food is the most essential thing on which our lives depend. However, there will be a threat to supplying nutritious food for future generations. Uma will demonstrate how she uses proteins to create a sustainable vegetarian protein-rich omelet. So please welcome her. Hello. Hello everyone, I'm Uma. I'm a PhD student from the National University of Singapore and the Singapore Institute of Food and Biotechnology Innovation. Today, I'm very happy to share with you about my work on developing a vegan alternative to omelette. I'm sure here everyone is familiar with omelettes, right? Indeed, there is a huge reliance on eggs to create omelettes. However, the egg supply network is highly volatile is being affected by rising transport costs and massive avian flu outbreaks. For this reason, we want to develop a vegan alternative which can more sustainably address the demand for eggs. So this is the vegan omelette we have developed. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a liquid formula with the same protein content as eggs. You can fry it just as how you fry eggs. And after frying, it has a similar texture. Uh, let me see if I can click my frying of my eggs. Uh, okay, I guess I can't. Never mind. Okay, uh, so now I'll be moving on to the, how we develop the vegan omelette. So our hypothesis was that if we adhere to the very nature of omelette, which is an emulsion that is stabilized by protein and lecithin, we will be able to achieve the same texture as omelette. So an emulsion is actually a liquid, emulsion, a liquid formula with oil droplets being suspended within, whereas lecithin is another word for phospholipids. So we selected proteins for amaranth grains because amaranth is a neutral uh, colored grain and it, you can extract the protein at pH 8 and it has a very neutral color. And this is a key advantage because many plant proteins, well, they have all sorts of colors. And moreover, amaranth protein is also a complete protein and it has a very high protein content facilitating efficient protein extraction. We added lutein containing rice oil to this emulsion because rice oil is used to provide the lipid content present in egg and lutein is not only a micronutrient but is the very pigment that confers egg its yellow colour. In addition, we, which is the variable that we focus on in this study, we added varying amounts of soy lecithin. Soy lecithin is used because it's a byproduct of soy oil, lecithin, of soy oil processing facilitating valorization. The range of soy lecithin content explored ranges from 0.26% to 8 times of this content. 0.26% is the very content of phosphatidylcholine, the dominant phospholipid in eggs. And 8 times of this content approaches the total phospholipid content in eggs. So you can see we are really trying to mimic the very nature of egg. And what do we get is a vegan omelette with the same protein and lipid content as egg. Well, what about texture? Indeed, there are many textural parameters, but I'll just like to focus on quick recovery. So for example, when you're eating like peanut butter or uh, Nutella, when you, your tongue glides over the sample, you actually expect a slight deformation. But if you're eating omelette, you actually expect the sample to be able to bounce back. And that is as precisely the recovery phase of creep. So creep applies a slight deformation, and recovery is how the sample recovers. So we can see that generally by raising the lecithin content, the resistance to deformation will be strengthened. And this is shown by the J-max being decreasing from the blue line. Oops from the blue line to the orange line, which is the highest lecithin content. So this is how the deformation is uh, reduced. Moreover, the deformation rate is also decreased. And this can be seen from the, um, the J1 phase. So there are three stages of deformation. This is instantaneous, this is retarded, and this is the plastic phase. So J1 decreases on raising the lecithin content, whereas the retardation time is the same, reducing deformation rate. Lastly, we can also see that the recovery of the samples would improve because J0, which is the instantaneous portion, and J1, which is the retarded portion, are similar across the samples, but J max decreases on raising lecithin content, thus improving recovery. So in general, the mimics with the best uh, textural resemblance are those of the red and the green line, which corresponds to one-time and two-time lecithin content, overlapping in omelette, which is the black line. 
So how then do we understand why lecithin was strengthening the vegan omelette? To facilitate this, we applied confocal imaging, so we can actually stain the lecithin, the protein, and the oil droplets using different dyes, and the lecithin signals are red, protein signals are green, oil droplets are blue. So we can see that when we raise the lecithin content from in absence to the highest, previously it's the green, uh, green circles, but here is red circles. So what this shows is that the lecithin is gradually absorbing to the oil droplet, and this, because lecithin can reduce the surface tension better than proteins, this facilitates a reduction in median oil droplet volume from 4.5 to 0.4. So by reducing oil droplet volume, the oil droplets pose less obstruction to the protein aggregating, hence strengthening the omelette. We also observed something very interesting here, which was that we previously thought that lecithin will absorb only to the oil droplet interface. But we observed that as we raise the lecithin content, and even at low lecithin content, the lecithin actually prefers to interact with the protein rather than absorbing at the oil droplet interface. Why this is the case suggests that lecithin was actually interacting with the protein. So to understand how the lecithin was interacting with the proteins, we applied deep learning-based molecular docking. And for MRI protein, we modeled this using the 11S pro globulin because 11S dominate over 7S based on SDS page. And for soil lecithin, we modeled this using the phosphate choline. What we observed based on the three deep learning approaches, using SSNet to identify the binding sites, and then inserting this into SMINA and Autodot-VINA to predict the binding orientations, and then also inserting using a full deep learning approach in NINA, which um, you can insert the whole protein coordinates and it predicts where it binds at, is that there are two main cavities lecithin binds at, cavity 1 and cavity 2, and this corresponds to the more hydrophobic regions of the protein. What does this then translate to the protein conformation? Well, we observed that as we raise the lecithin content, the peak intensity of tryptophan-dominated fluorescence would decrease, and this actually suggests that the tryptophan is increasingly in a hydrophobic environment. Interestingly, based on our docking results, we found that tryptophan is only present at cavity 2 and not present at cavity 1. So this suggests that cavity 2 was being buried within the aggregates. Not only was there a higher affinity for cavity 2, we also observed uh, the higher affinity based on more lecithin binding here at cavity 2 than 1, and also the most negative binding energy of cavity 2 exceeding cavity 1. And this was similarly observed across the other two tools as well. So there was a higher affinity for cavity 2, and there was also cavity 2 being buried. This will explain the initial decrease in surface hydrophobicity on lecithin addition, whereas subsequent lecithin addition may facilitate the binding of lecithin to this cavity 1, facilitate a slight increase in surface hydrophobicity. This is possible because lecithin is a multiplier with a phosphate hit. So overall, the net decrease in su surface hydrophobicity suggests that lecithin promoted hydrophobic interactions. And we observe very interestingly, which we are still studying, is that lecithin also promoted further protein conformational changes during the that actually enabled the disulfide bonding during the frying of eggs. And because of that, the free sulfhydrogel group in the vegan omelette actually decreases on raising the lecithin content. So to conclude my study, we found that adding lecithin to MRI vegan omelettes actually confers texture resemblance through two main ways. Firstly, lecithin adsorbs to the oil droplets to reduce the oil droplet size. And secondly, lecithin will promote hydrophobic interactions and disulfide bondings. So thank you everyone, and I'd like to present to you a vegan omelette which is cholesterol-free, sustainable, yet has the same protein content as eggs. Thank you.